Has President Biden considered maybe beefing up the public Iran posture to be more than just one word? You're, you're referring to don't. Is there any regret here about unfreezing billions of dollars for Iranian leaders? I'm betting if they're sitting in Tehran, they're taking it seriously when President Biden says he's going to defend Israel. We put skin in the game, a whole heck of a lot of it. John Kirby can say that the Iranians are, are scared all he wants, but I think that we can see right through that. Yesterday in the White House press briefing room, it was John Kirby's job as the spokesman for the National Security Council to try to defend the Biden administration's feckless ineptitude in the Middle East and how their main message coming out of Iran's act of war against our ally Israel is to just uh, thump our chest and say, Israel better not retaliate. Peter Ducey asked Mr. Kirby a very simple question about the Biden administration's policy toward Iran. Thanks. John, has President Biden considered maybe beefing up the public Iran posture to be more than just one word? You're, you're referring to don't. Yeah. And so let's talk about. And they did it. Yeah, let's talk about don't for a minute. If you're forgetting exactly what Biden's policy was, here he was just two days before Iran's act of war against Israel, where he was asked, once again, what's your message to Iran? What is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Are American personnel we'll not just that risk? The message to Iran was don't. And of course, Iran did. This is all he's been doing for the last year or so when asked about Iran and their posture toward Israel. Don't clearly isn't working. But here's John Kirby having to polish the turd, as it were, and try to explain to Peter Ducey, his viewers, and really all of the American people about how Biden is really getting the job done with that whole don't thing, even though, of course, Iran did. Anyway, and let's talk so about what we did, Peter. Let's talk about don't and did. Let's talk about Saturday night. He made it clear that he didn't want to see escalation in the region. And, and uh, let me finish. He added military resources to the region right after October 7th. And then when we had an inkling that this kind of thing was coming, he added even more military resources to the region, more destroyers that were capable of shooting down ballistic missiles, fighters, a fighter squadron that was able to shoot down drones. And that's what we did. So you can talk about the, the don't word all you want, but let's talk about what did happen. And what did happen was Iran utterly failed. And if I'm sitting in Tehran right now, I'm betting that President Biden takes it pretty seriously when he says, don't escalate. He's going to act to make sure that you can. And they didn't. Yes, they fired an unprecedented amount of munitions, but how much of a success did they have, Peter? None, zero, very little infrastructure. It was an embarrassing failure for the Supreme Leader for the IRGC. Now that we know. Oh, uh, see, this is, I'm so sorry. I, I need to apologize. I need to apologize for myself and for town hall media and every platform that I'm on right now, because I couldn't, believe I would got it wrong. You know, so here's the thing. When Joe Biden says don't, apparently what that means is don't worry about firing all your missiles at Israel because they've got defense systems in place that will actually intercept all of those missiles and it's not going to cause any damage. Or don't means don't try it again after you try it the first time, because we will have intercepted your missiles and then we will have wasted over a billion dollars of defense capabilities and left Israel more vulnerable. And All right, maybe I don't need to give an apology to anybody. So apparently don't actually means it's okay if you do, as long as nobody gets hurt or not enough people get hurt. Apparently don't is really his way of saying, we'll probably survive if you try it, but you better not do it again or else you'll really be embarrassed. Okay, I guess the turd's been polished, but here's the thing about polishing a turd, John. And you know this, you're an old military guy and that's a military phrase, polish the turd. You can polish it all you want. It's still a stinky, smelly turd that the Iranians do not listen to President Biden's public 
warnings. Is there any regret here about unfreezing billions of dollars for Iranian leaders during the president's administration? What unfreezing are you talking about? He unfroze billions for, of dollars. For there Iranian was leaders? Yeah. Really? I don't think so. Okay, so you first of all. Say it's for humanitarian purposes, but doesn't that. But you don't um, believe me. Well, doesn't that free up money for them to spend on other stuff? Where do you get the money for an unprecedented number of munitions to, to fire at Israel? So first of all, I'm betting if they're sitting in Tehran, they're taking it seriously when President Biden says he's going to defend Israel. We put skin in the game, a whole heck of a lot of it, and knocked almost everything out of the sky. So I'm betting they're taking it pretty seriously. And as for this uh, this unfreezing, none of that fund, none of those funds, funds set up in an account, by the way, by the previous administration, goes directly to the supreme leader of the IRGC, can only be used for humanitarian purposes. And we're watching that account very, very closely to make sure that that's what happens. And can I just ask it rhetorically, because I know we sort of delved into this a little bit, but number one, maybe we should have a rule, a guideline, let's call it a law. Maybe we should have a law that prevents us from giving any kind of aid, even humanitarian aid, to a murderous terrorist supporting regime who not only persecutes their own people, but calls us the great Satan and promises to wipe one of our allies off the planet. Maybe it should be a rule or a guideline or a policy or better yet, a law. Maybe we shouldn't fund terrorists, number one. Okay. And number two, you know, if we're giving them so-called humanitarian aid, doesn't that mean that they're free not to have to feed or clothe or give medical assistance to their people, which means their treasury and their money can be used for other things like, you know, missiles and drones? You know, if we don't give them humanitarian aid, then they're going to say, OK, guys, do we want to buy more missiles or do we want to, you know, uh, have food for our people and the citizens? And if they say, screw the people, we're going to buy more missiles, people are going to get angry. Maybe the people will rise up. Maybe the people will actually overthrow their government who is more interested in buying missiles instead of feeding them. I could be wrong. I know I didn't go to Yale. I'm not a smart guy like the people who work in the Biden administration. But it seems like the current policy ain't really working out very well. Right? But thankfully, we're giving them humanitarian aid. We're monitoring it very closely. And then eventually, all the money that they're not using to feed and close and give medical care to the people of Iran will be used to buy nuclear weapons. It's a great plan, I think. One more question between Ducey and Kirby. You guys often defend all the trips to Delaware by saying the president is not on vacation. He's working. He can be the president from anywhere. So why do you have to come back on Saturday? Well, we got indications uh, shortly after arriving. We got uh, better, firmer intelligence and information about the, the specific timing of what we expected to be uh, this Iranian attack. And the president didn't bat an eye before getting back on that helicopter and coming back. And he was here all Saturday night in the situation room from mid-afternoon till late at night, getting real-time updates from General Carrillo and from his defense team all throughout the night, including calling Prime Minister Netanyahu right from the situation room. And as Kareem mentioned on Sunday, he was right back at it again, working the G7, calling King Abdullah. I don't know what else to tell you. He had a very busy full weekend. Well, uh, I don't know what else to tell you. I've got something you can tell us. You could actually answer the question. The question isn't what did the president do when he came back from Delaware? The president, the question was whenever the president is criticized for all of the vacations, which I believe is now 40 percent of his presidency, you always say it doesn't matter where he is. He can handle anything in the world, no matter where he is. So there's no such thing as a vacation. Well, if that's the case, why did he come back to Washington if he could handle everything that he needed to handle from Delaware? And the answer is either one of two things. Number one, they've been lying all this time and he did in fact have to be in Washington. Or number two, this was a political consideration. They wanted the photo op of him in the situation room being a very intent president controlling matters from Washington, D.C. Or on the other side of the equation, instead of getting the photo op to make it look good politically, they were worried that it was going to look bad politically for him to have his big white pasty skin butt on the beach while Iran was attacking Israel. It's probably both of the last two, although I don't want to rule out all of the lying part too. It could be all of the above. Let's go with all of it. 
A quick reminder, though, about this whole don't, don't, don't policy. It's not just Biden. It's the entire administration. Their entire foreign policy in preventing Iran from doing exactly what they did has been don't. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. Don't, don't, don't. What's the message to Iran? Don't. It was very important to send a very clear message to anyone who might seek to take advantage of the conflict in Gaza to threaten our personnel uh, here or anywhere else in the region. Don't do it. What is your... They did it. I suspect that the reason they came up with this whole don't thing is because it's all Joe Biden can memorize and remember without a big cue card to read off of. Hey, if they ask you about Iran, just say don't. Okay. But it's funny, whenever Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State, the last person you saw in that montage, whenever he's asked about, you know, Russia and their incursions into Ukraine, he's got a lot more than just don't. We can never let the crimes Russia's committing become our new normal. Bucha is not normal. Mariupol is not normal. Irpin is not normal. Bombing schools and hospitals and apartment buildings to rubble is not normal. We can never. Have you heard him say anything close to that about the terrorists in Hamas and the murder of over a thousand innocent Israelis and Americans and other people in October? No. You know, for, for Iran and for Gaza, for Hamas, he's got don't. Don't. And while we're talking about Putin. It's amazing how Joe Biden warns people on the world stage not to do things, and then they just sort of thumb their nose and do it, and nothing ever happens. Here was Joe Biden when he was running for president, talking about how he was the only one who could contain Vladimir Putin. Mind you, this is before the presidential election, so it's about a year and a half before Vladimir Putin rolled right into Ukraine, something that I'm told Joe Biden and the Democrats and everyone in America seems to be really, really exercised about. Lord knows we spent tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars on that war. Well, here was Joe Biden promising you that it would never happen. Folks, you hear the news. Once again, Putin and the Russians are trying to engage in our election to decide who the president's going to be. And this time I'm the object of their, of their attention. Because Putin knows if I am president of the United States, his days of tyranny and trying to intimidate the United States and those in Eastern Europe are over. I'm going to stand up to him. He's a bully, just like the president. And I know he doesn't want me to be president, but to tell you what, when I'm president, things are going to change. Mr. Putin, the American people decide their elections, not you. Chip in a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. I do like the... Uh the ending it with a give me your money ask. So there you go. There was his stern warning to Vladimir Putin. When I become president, your days are numbered. It's over. I'm going to take care of it. And it seems like Putin is a little more aggressive after Joe Biden won the presidency than before Joe Biden winning the president. It's almost like Putin and Hamas and the Iranians and China it's almost like they're not intimidated and scared by this guy, right? John Kirby can say that the Iranians are, are scared all he wants. But I think that we can see right through that, can't we?